What's up, guys? Today is Wednesday, the 20 something. I don't know. The 20. What is today? The 26. Why well, didn't know today was the 26? Yesterday, my grandbaby was born. I had. I have a new addition. So now, wow. Well, my son just had a son yesterday, and I'm really sad because I couldn't be there. Um, he was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. So, and then I actually have another son here, Vaughn. This, his girlfriend is due in January. I hope they have a girl. Because I already have a little boy over here. Y'all see Damari all the time. Y'all see Damari when I post them. Yeah, today was my co-wash day. So, I'm in the midst of putting products in. But I thought I'd turn the camera on and talk. Because y'all, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, I, I'm really tired. Um, we all get weary sometime in the life's journeys. And that's where I'm at. So I got the call, no, I got the call, I got an email and said they went with a different candidate, which is okay, because if it was meant for me to be in there, I would be in there. But, you know, this is getting old real quick, real fast. And I know I quit my job without a job. Some people say that was the biggest mistake, you should have waited until you found a job. Well, I was looking the whole time that I was in there. The whole time I was in there, I was looking for a job. But it got to a situation, got to a, a point in time where I was like, I'm not going to make it. It, it. I'm just not going to make it. And I'd rather leave a job by choice and not by force. And because of what I was going through, there's only so much person can take. And sometimes you have to say when, even when you don't want to. So... It was just, I was just starting to have anxiety and some more stuff. And I was just getting real tired, real fast. And it was like I couldn't, I had no way. It was almost like I was trapped in a situation. And the more people I went to and told them about what was going on, it was like everybody was turning a blind eye. Like, everybody was turning a blind eye to the situation. And I just got tired. And I took the necessary steps that I needed to for me. But if I could have done anything differently, I would have. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my hair, really. That's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. I think I'm just going to put it up in a puff. But at this point, and I, I'm just tired. I'm tired of looking for jobs. My camera battery is blinking red let's see if this camera is charged okay this one is charged let me use this one hold on guys let me switch this out right quick all right guys i'm back oh, quality is a little different but oh well i'm back this camera I like the quality better on this camera. Mm -hmm. Gotta discuss it. But the battery is blinking. <sighs> so. And I like it because it's much smaller than my Sony. Anyway, what I was saying, y'all. I'm just tired of, of interviewing and hoping these people pay me what I'm worth. And asking people to help me survive. That's where I'm at. I'm just tired. And I know that I know that if that job was meant for me, I would have got it. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I'm just tired. I'm, I'm really just tired. I don't know. I know I can't give up. That's not an option. Because giving up is never an option for me. I came to California with $50 in my pocket when I crossed the state line. So giving up is not an option. But being tired and weary and frustrated, those are all human emotions. And that's where I'm at right now. Ooh, that was too much in a, too much conditioner right there. Good thing I'm pulling it up in a bun. 
But that's truly where I'm at. And with everything I'm going through, I refuse to put a cash out. I've had very good people offer to, you know, help and send me money. But it's just so many people on YouTube begging. And I just I just don't want to do that because I'm totally relying on my faith. God didn't bring me over here to give up. God didn't bring me over here to let me fall and let me go. I'm in a waiting, this is my waiting room. It's not comfortable, y'all. Oh my gosh, this is not comfortable at all. I'm used to having an income. And it's so funny how the people that you would think have your back will be the very people that stand against your dreams, your aspirations, your goals, and your achievements. The very people you think will have your back. This is a little straight, little straight here. I remember I told my cousin, my first cousin that I was real close to, that I was coming. And, oh my gosh, this is white. I'm gonna have to do something. And it's beating up, what is this? Maybe that's water. Oh, I don't like the way this is looking. It's like two products on my head didn't get along and they decided to separate. Let me see. But anyway, um, oh yeah, I gotta co-wash this back out. I don't like this. It's leaving this crazy substance on my hair. Let me see what happens if I brush it out. Oh. And I didn't use anything. Yes, I did. Yes, I didn't use anything different. Oh, yep, look at that. I used this. And it's not getting along with the other products in my hair. It's causing everybody to stand alone. They're not working together. They're not showing a united front. What in the world? Okay. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back for the what, third time? First my battery, then stuff in my hair. And I wanted to get my hair straight. I don't like it. It's not doing something. I don't know. This, this is, oh, let me see something. But, um, what was I saying? I'm just fighting with my hair. Um, I think we were talking about how people will use your struggle so they can feel better about theirs. Um, I think I left off talking about my cousin who I hadn't talked to in a year. And she, I would try to call her when I first got here to stay in contact with her. Because remember, this was not only my first cousin, this was like my sister. She's the one that took me to Vegas for the first time and everything. And I would try to call her. And whenever I reached out to her, it was always some excuse why to get off the phone. And I was like, what in the world? So June of 2015, she finally called me first. She called me first. And she said, oh, I want you to know that I'm going to buy a ticket to come out there the 4th of July. And I had worked the overnight shift. So I was like, what? Like, we haven't talked in a year. Now you coming out here? So and I guess my response wasn't what she thought it would be. So she was like, let me call you back when you realize that I'm coming to see you and you can act happy about me coming to see you. And I was like, okay. And I hung up. And then I woke up and I was like, wait a minute. I tried to call this girl a straight year. And she didn't want to talk to me. That kind of solidified for me that she wanted me there to stay in my struggle so she could feel better about hers. Anyway. I told her, I said, sweetie, before you come here, me and you need to talk. We need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk because we haven't spoken in a year. I texted her that. I ain't hear from her for another six months. For another six months, I did not hear from that girl. The next time I heard from her, we was in some blown-out fight because of Facebook, y'all. Of all things Facebook. 
Because she told me, she had the nerve to call me and tell me, I posted something on Facebook and she told me my MF and response was not needed towards the person because she didn't like the person no more and she felt like that I was disrespecting her by commenting, by, by responding to her comment that she commented on my Facebook status. I was like, are you serious? Like, we're not children. You don't get to tell me who I can respond to. You don't even get to tell me who they have on my friends list. So that was the next time we communicated and we stopped talking then. That's been five years. Ooh, look, I got jail falling out. But people will keep you near so they can feel better about their struggle while watching yours. And I was like, oh, okay, so that's what you want. No, thank you for letting me know that's what you was on, though. But um, we haven't spoken. And it's sad because she was, like, the closest thing I had to a best friend. Right? You got to be careful who you let. In your life because even family members will stand against you which is crazy because if I like you I like you and I won't stand against you now if you do something crazy I'm gonna like you enough to tell you that's that's you out of pocket you shouldn't do that you're not representing yourself in a good light right now but um yeah, I'm trying to get my curls to pop on this side. But I think I'm making a bigger mess. I really do. Because your journey is not for everybody. That's that's true. And I get why people on YouTube are hesitant to share their journeys. I really do. Because some people will use your, your journey and form a weapon against you and attack you with your challenges, with your situation, with your circumstance. All because they don't want you to see theirs. Which is crazy. Um, y'all, I, I don't know. I just need to vent. I'm tired. I'm going to let y'all know now how I'm tired. I did this job. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. That's where I'm at right now. I'm just tired. And it's okay to be tired in your journey. It's okay. It's okay for me to be tired. I know I'm in a waiting room, but I'm tired. I know... That things are going to change. But I'm tired right now. Um, there are some really good people. That reached out to me and said. Listen can I do anything for you. That man on Facebook. Um, that I met on YouTube. And they said let me send you something. You got a cash app. And I'm like yeah. But I don't want you. See this is my thing. I don't want to take $10 from a working class person. If you say you got a job. I don't want your money. You know why. Because if I take $10 from you. I'm taking ten dollars from your light bill. I'm taking ten dollars from your rent. I'm taking ten dollars from your food bill. I'm taking ten dollars from your cell phone bill. I'm taking ten dollars from your cable bill. Ten dollars from your mortgage, your your car note, your car insurance, from your children. Or your grandchildren. Your household. Period. I don't want to take any money from you. You're a working person. And let me tell you something, my Heavenly Father, his pockets are endless. I know I'm not going to be in this situation, this circumstance, this season of my life for long. I know that I know that I know that. I know what he told me. And I'm okay. It's just that even with me being okay, knowing that this is not going to last forever, I'm human. I can still get tired. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm tired. I'm not frustrated. I'm just tired. I'm not angry. I'm just tired. So, yeah, I gotta, I'm trying to comb the mess out that I made. Ugh. This hair is not cooperating today. I just want a natural bun. Is that too hard to ask? Like, my hair is working against me too? I remember I put a video up when we was moving out the condo and my dad reached out to me and was like, why would you put that out there? I said, because I wanted to. Like, I'm past the part, I'm past the stage of protection. I lived on the street of Richmond, Virginia from 16 to 19 because <clears throat> my stepfather was abusive. So, I'm past that part where you can protect me. We've come a long way. We've come a really long way. So I know he's, his intent is to protect me and to guard me from people who will be malicious with my journey. But I'm, I'm pretty strong. I can stand up for myself. 
Been through a lot. Seen a lot. Learned a lot. And my faith has carried me through a lot. So, I get what he was doing, but... Yeah, my hair is stripping right now. I, I'm like... Getting tired of this, too. But, yeah. I don't want to take money because I want to stand in my faith. That's where I'm at. Standing in my faith. And to those who are going through a struggle... Don't let people use your struggle, your challenges, your circumstances, your situation as a weapon against you. I own my stuff. I own it. I'm unemployed right now. I don't have my own place because I'm staying with my best friend, which is my daughter. And I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. She is my biggest support system outside of Shane and my boys. I, I don't really have family that can support me. And I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking about emotionally and mentally. Because some of my family revel in my struggles. And it's okay. It's okay. Sometimes people revel in your struggles. So theirs don't. Because it makes theirs not look as bad. And that's the truth. You ever heard somebody say, well, I thought my situation was bad. <clears throat> it ain't that bad. But where I live, where I stand, and where I'm at, my situation can always be worse. Y'all yes, people living here in San Diego in tents. And I'm talking about children. Women and children. They live in tents on the street. So my circumstance can be so much worse. So I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm tired, but I'm grateful. I appreciate it. But I'm tired. And I'm grateful. So I understand that my situation can be so much worse. Because for the grace of God, there go I. But you got to understand, their situation and their circumstances can be so much worse. Um, I know when I get through this season, what I would like to do is build tiny houses, find a piece of land, and build like 14 tiny houses and home and house the homeless, give them somewhere to transition back into society. That's what my, my, um, that's what I would like to do. Just to help people. That's what I want to do. I want to be a servant. But right now, I can't serve anybody. Not even me. So, yeah. That was my vending session. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to y'all later. Because I'm getting tired of venting now. See, I'm just tired. I'll talk to y'all later. Next time, keep another dance. At least my hair started cooperating a little bit. Right? Alright, bye guys.